Hey guys, what's going on? It's Alex from Fitment Industries. Hey, it's Andrew, what's up? And we are on our third episode? Number three. Of this or that. So if you guys didn't know, you drop a comment below, you choose two things, we look at them, we look at the funny ones, the best ones, and then we'll actually give our personal feedback on which one we think is better than the other. Oh, then of course, the choice is yours. You can get with this, or you can get with that. You can get with this, or you can get with that. You can get with this, or you can get with that. So, before we jump into that, we're trying to get to 50,000 subscribers, so be sure to hit the subscribe button. Do you have anything else to add? There is a bunch of awesome comments, so don't feel bad if we didn't get to you. We're going to try to get to them all. We kind of scrubbed through them all and picked the stuff that we thought were really good topics to cover, so we will try to get to you, so stay tuned. Absolutely, and then if you didn't get your question answered in the previous episode, just actually submit it again below so that we have the newest video to look through comments. So we have an intern, and actually we already filmed this intro before, but he forgot to get an SD card that was actually empty. So we're blaming the whole intro that we had to do again on him, but yeah. his name is Jasper. Jasper's gonna be reading us the comments. We don't have Mario anymore. Jasper, first question. First question from, comes from Kentaro Hanjo. Plasti dip or vinyl? You first. I'm a non-plasti dip guy. And no offense to you guys that are plasti dipping, but I just, I can't, I can't yeah. do it. I don't. I don't like a car that's been plasti dipped to death. The badges, the mm -hmm. valve cover, the wheels, the intake, like it's just, blah, I can't do it. So I have homies that do vinyl. I've been into vinyl for years. Yeah. You've seen my old car that vinyl on the side. So I just, vinyl is clean. It's just, I don't, I'd rather do it. I just can't, Yeah. I can't plasti dip. I'd probably say wrap too. So like I get where plasti dip has like a purpose. You know, if you're trying to keep your you know, stock wheels looking maybe a little bit newer, or you're running something in the winter time. Uh, but I think with how cheap powder coating is and how vinyl has gotten a lot cheaper and stuff like that, it's just hard to beat uh, the look of vinyl over wrap. I know there's gonna be somebody in the comments already arguing about like clear coats and all that sort of stuff, and I know you can make dip look really sharp if right. you invest yeah. enough time and money into it, but at the end of the day, the sole purpose of dip is just not the same caliber in my eyes as, as wrap. I That's just my personal opinion. Yeah, and I, I think if you're gonna do the really professional dip, then you, you should just do paint. Yeah. I don't know, same thing. Because I, by the time you, yeah. yeah, and by the time you get up there, it costs about the same amount as a wrap does yeah. anyway. Yeah, so. it's, it can be pricey. Yeah. Number two. Number two comes from Randy Thomas. Would you rather own a Dodge Demon or a Tesla SPD1000? So I will go first on this one. So I have, a couple of years ago, I got to review a Camaro, a Shelby, and a Hellcat, back before the demo was a thing. And I was blown away with how cool the, the Hellcat was at the time and the Demon. And I've always just had a huge respect for Dodge because they're one of the last companies that I think still makes cars true to who they are. So like the Hellcat, the Demon, they're heavy, they're huge. They have a huge a motor in them. They're extremely fast in a straight line. They look just monstrous and they're big and wide and you know they're bulky they're not they're not like a sportsish car but they're not trying to be somebody that they're not so I've always had a huge respect for that with with Dodge and so I think Dodge I would take a Hellcat over or Demon over a Tesla just because of of the brand and and the the image that that the Hellcat has it's so badass uh, I'm not into the boats or the yachts, if you will. Uh, no, I do, it, it's you a great a, car. You own a wagon. I've I've heard of. Um, <laughs> it's a soccer mom wagon. <laughs> so I just I don't. I would take the Tesla. Yeah. Because I've seen some really rad videos of people racing those. The torque is insane. The body lines are insane. And the it's just such cool technology. I just I don't know if I was gonna get like a muscle car. I think I would go vintage. Yeah. Like you know, Old 69 school. Camaro or something. Make it super wild. I just they're neat, but I like the the sleekness and the kind of mystery hole, yeah. you know, electric car thing with the sure. Teslas, so I'd go that route. Number three. <laughs> Question three comes from Mark Wenzel. Would you rather run flush or tucked fit? So Mark Wenzel asked if we'd rather run flush or tucked. Yeah. So I'll go, I'll go first. So uh, I'm running tucked fitment, and I think if you're running airlift, and you want to tuck your wheels, you know, that's what I decided to do with this, this go around on my car at least. I didn't want to run anything super wild where I was gonna to have to uh, cut into the plastic, cut the actual fenders, things like that. My car's less than a year old, so I just wanted to be able to air out, tuck over the wheels, uh, and just look super sure. clean. But um, ideally, I would definitely go flush because there's nothing worse than seeing somebody who has crappy looking fitment and they're just sunken and that is, ugh, you know, yeah. so. 
Yeah, keep yeah. them keep them flush unless you're bagged. That's my two cents. <clears throat> I would say flushed, and the only reason I say that or the flush look is because I've never owned airlift before. Um, I'll, pretty much everybody that I know is running airlift of some kind, and. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with that, but I think that if you're even running a static setup, if, you're, if your setup was tucked, um, it probably wouldn't look the best. It definitely doesn't perform the best, and so I would go with the flush look. So that's the cool thing, I think, just being here is that we can kind of get more aggressive with our fitments, and of course we have a huge ass gallery that we can look at and see what fits and what doesn't. Indeed. And I think flush is just the way to go, because if you're gonna buy wheels and tires, you should do it right the first time. And it, it, it's funny because like years ago, I remember looking at photos of my old car and it really yeah. wasn't a thing. It was, I had like small wheels and this crazy like fast mm -hmm. and furious body kit. But now like that's that's the scene is being flush, being clean, getting that fitment spot on. And with the resources and stuff like we have yeah. now with the gallery, I mean, there's no reason you can't get your wheel fitment like spot on. So yeah. keep her flush. Gunther? I'm a flush. <laughs> Question number four. Oh, my chocolates. From Damon Dubray. Would you rather have a molded or bolted wide body kit? Ha! I talked about this. We talked about this at SEMA. I don't know if you remember that conversation. Yep, yep. So, controversial topic. Controversial, to say the least. You know, riveted versus molded. And in my opinion, I think that riveted is going to go away in about a year or two. And I think molded is going to come into effect into a much bigger place. So, like D3s, CTSVs, and stuff like that, the molded body kits, the molded GTR stuff, the Rocket Bunny, that kits that are now being molded on instead of being riveted on. I'm more of a fan of because I think you've, we've reached this like saturation point with over fenders and riveted stuff. I even had riveted over fenders on my Datsun and I remember when I got it done I was like, should have molded, uh, molded it. And that's just my opinion. There's a lot of people that run riveted, but I would go with the molded. I just think it's a cleaner look. It just looks higher end. It looks like somebody yeah. put more money into it, more care. And because of that, it shows overall. And plus when you mold it on, a lot of times it's, you're doing it the right way. I don't think I've seen many people mold on yeah. their, their wide bodies and, and screw it up because it's such a it's such a process. Yeah, to elaborate off that, there's just there's nothing that irks me more, especially with you know, because I know there's knockoff kits and things like that, but mm -hmm. you know, when you see a kit that people haven't really prepped. Yeah. And it's kind of, you know, you're going to get that wave and if they don't put the rubber in between there and then there's these weird gaps and stuff. Yeah. I just like you said, I think it's I think it's kind of a cool thing right now mm -hmm. and it's going to go away. You, you just can't beat molded. It just looks so freaking clean. You yeah. Know? And it's tough because if the if the scene is super sharp or if the scene likes really high contrasty cars or if the scene really likes sharp edges or if the scene wants to go back to like round stuff, you know, it's tough because once you once you over fender your car, you're you're done. Like that's I think you can't like, go backwards. Like I mean you can but like, there's a time and a place, like if you're doing your car and it looks more like a track setup and you have the splitter, the big wing, um, I think it'd be appropriate to have the riveted fenders. Yeah. You know, it makes sense. Obviously, you're not going to mold a kit, but if you're doing more show car stuff, like I would say mold them for sure. Yeah. You know, just yeah. depends on what you're driving. Number five, number five, <laughs> Gunther. Um, question number five from Hey Zero, it's zero, Nix, no zero. Would you rather put your name on the screen? Your intake or exhaust noise? That's you. You first. On the count of three. One, two, three. Exhaust. Intake. Oh man. So I'm really excited. I just ordered a cat back for the all track. There's not a lot of options. I ordered a AWE tuning. Mm -hmm. It's three inch all the way back. So I just I drove a couple of buddies' cars recently, and I, you know, they have an exhaust, Miltech, AWE, whatever. A lot of Euro stuff. And uh, I get in my car and I'm like, it's so quiet, I can't do mm -hmm. it. So um, I bought an intake, I had a problem with it, but I, it, you know, once again, what do you want to spend? Obviously you get an intake, three, four, five hundred bucks, depending yep. on what you get. Um, you know, exhaust can be three, four times that, depending mm -hmm. on what you get. So um, I just, I think I'd say exhaust, man, when you hammer yeah. on it, you know? I mean, that, and it's, that's true. I mean, an exhaust note is, is, is great. I had an old E55 AMG 2004 that was all modified about, and 
I had a lot of supercharged cars in the past, my Datsun was supercharged too, and for me, I enjoyed the intake noises way more than the exhaust note because the supercharger whine and an aftermarket intake on that was just sounded a million times better yeah. from the front in my eyes than the rear. The rear still sounded great, it was loud, as obnoxious, it popped, but the intake, it had that whine, it just had that air sound, and it just, it sounded like it was just ready to go. Yep. And I love that noise. I love when you start up a car and you're, you know, you're in front of it, or if you have a car that has a mid-engine and you hear it from the back and it's your intake and you just hear like the turbo spooling or it's just sitting there and it's just whining. Like there's just something about that noise that I just, I can't yeah. get over. I so love the it. answer is both, we want both. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> ideally, <laughs> get them both. Number six. So question number six comes, comes from Cade Connolly, all wheel drive or rear wheel drive? Oof, duh. That's all wheel tough. drive um, for me. I've had a lot of front wheel drive cars in the past and I just, they suck. I worked at a car dealership. Um, all wheel drive? Opportunity. You own all wheel drive or front? Is it front wheel front, drive? Front wheel drive. My oh. Altrax all wheel drive, but I, I, that's why I bought an all wheel drive gotcha. car just because, of course, we live in Wisconsin. The weather sucks. It's terrible. So yeah. um, it's beneficial to drive that up here. But, you know, obviously with these cars having like launch control and stuff, mm -hmm. I just. I would do all-wheel drive, but I understand, obviously, you know, if you're drifting and you want to get yeah. sideways, then rear-wheel drive. Going back, man, I just love turning off the traction control and just putting my foot down and then just listening to the rears just rip. I like all-wheel drive because it makes me feel like I'm a better driver than I probably actually am because all-wheel drive is just one of those systems that really works around the driver. Um, the current car has all-wheel drive and it's made me feel like a good driver, but it's, you're right, up here it's definitely something that's more about just daily reliability than it is about any other form of function. I think if we live down south, if I live down south, I'd probably be more more apt to having a rear-wheel drive car, sure. but rear-wheel drive cars are by far more fun, I think, to play around in yeah. just because of all the dumb stuff you can do with them. Um, but that's just my opinion. I think if I was driving a car every day, it'd be all-wheel drive just because we're up here in Wisconsin. I think if I had a toy that I didn't drive a whole heck of a lot, if I could, it'd be rear-wheel drive. Agree. Yeah. Definitely agree. Uh, question number seven comes from Tyler S. Would you rather own a Stance Miata or a Stance S2000? Does it have to be stanced? It does have to that be. It, it does have to be. You can stanced. go first because he uh, owns one of these technically. <laughs> and, and we already talked about the S2K in the last episode. I believe, yeah. So it's a. Uh, that's cool to see that those cars are popping up because yeah. ironically, a dude that works here just got an S2K, and we're like, man, when are you gonna yeah. do the the wide body yeah. and the spoon and muting yeah. parts and stuff? So spoon hard body. Oh god, don't even start it. Um, ha, ah, damn. I have, we have, we own, when I say we, I mean my wife and I, have a Miata that's all done up and I really, really enjoy it, but there's just nothing better looking and than a S2000. nice fitment lowered S2000. I just can't get over it. The seats, the interior, the tack, the, everything about the car is so cool. It's like 18 years old and it still looks better yeah. than most new entry level sports cars that come out like today. A car well ahead of its time. Yeah, and, absolutely. Um, no disrespect to the Miata. Hey, come on, man. I just, oh, I don't like them. I just <laughs> don't like them. I've never liked them. I don't like the way they look. I don't like the way they drive. But I understand they're cool little like track cars and stuff and most people just bebop around in them and autocross and stuff but yeah just the the sleekness of the s2000 the hood the components the uh, push button start i mean that car was just so yeah. it's it's timeless and yeah. then we talked about convertibles last yeah. time and whether it's hard top or convertible it's just a badass car i mean yeah. you can't go wrong so. they are sharper yeah. they're way more aggressive than, than s2k miata. all day miata looks like a marshmallow <laughs> 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 it does, it looks like a smushed marshmallow. You take two crackers and you push it down and you take the top cracker off, it's just like this ovalish thing and that's what a Miata looks like. I can like. see it, I can see it. All right, well on that note, um, <laughs> question number eight comes from Stiffy Goats. Stiffy Goats. <laughs> interior or full weight reduction interior? Oh uh, yeah, I remember this one. Oh Jesus. I, uh, I would say, wait, did we say full interior? Versus it, it, it said full, I put fully loaded, so I'm oh. assuming. So would you want fully, your flush toys? Fully, or? fully loaded all the way. Uh, the whole with not, the whole weight reduction thing is totally not my style. The Datsun had no 
AC, no heat, no anything. It didn't have power windows, it didn't have a radio, it didn't have nothing. It had two seats and a roll cage and that was it. And it sucked to drive around in. I mean, it was it was fun because it was, it was an experienced car. You drive it for the experience, but it was not comfortable. It was not fun to ride in. You couldn't drive more than 20 minutes. You know, I like getting into a car. I like having the AC, I like having a stereo, I like having power windows, I like having nav and Bluetooth. I like being able to you know put a movie in and if there's somebody in the passenger seat, they can just watch that. Yep. Um, yeah, I would, I would go with a fully loaded interior 10 out of 10 times if, if I could because Fun fact, if you really want to save weight, you should be saving weight with your wheels and tires. You shouldn't necessarily be trying to cut everything out. If you're looking to get wheels and stuff, you should go rotary forge. That way you can keep your air conditioning unit and not feel bad when you go to the track because you're still going to do a pretty good run. Wheel plug number two. Yeah, right? <laughs> so, yeah, fully loaded all day because I've been in between and I did this with when I just did my air installs yep. and I had half a car ripped apart, the back seats out um, and it just, I, I can't stand how it sounds. It's no. just you hear the clickety clanking of the rocks flying around and everything. And I've had buddies with high horsepower cars where it's stripped and I enjoy riding in that. So I'd rather let them do that. Yeah. Like the same thing. I enjoy my heated seats and comfortable you know, heated yeah. leather. And you know, I just, I, I need the, I like the toys. That's what you pay a lot of money for. You exactly. Know, to get a nice car. Yeah, absolutely. Next. So question nine comes from S5 Thomas. First mod you're buying intake, exhaust, or reflash? Uh, seeing that, I think both of us are kind of Euro guys. I, I, think, I would. I think we both have a tune. Yeah, I would say tune. Yeah. Uh, you can get so much out of a tune in, in your first in your first APR, ECS, or anything like that. It's it's crazy. Cab access ports, they do crazy stuff, man. You can't go wrong. A lot of times your car will feel like an entirely different vehicle yeah, it when just, you flash it. It, it really it. wakes the motor up. And once again, you know, what do you want to spend? But you know, the funny thing for a, a APR tune, like if you're a Euro guy, to get a uh, six, seven hundred dollar tune compared to an exhaust. I mean, you're just not going to get that power. It's it's yeah. so minimal. It sounds dope, but um, I just have a piggyback tune on the all track, and it just it really woke the car up. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just it's nuts. It's a huge difference. I, yeah, I would say tune. I'd say tune for sure. Tune first for sure. Okay, so last one. Last question. All right. Number ten comes from K Train Zero. 218. <laughs> Got it. We'll that was a, that was a lot of work for you to, yeah. to, to say that. He doesn't read as well. Yeah, reading is hard. Um, <laughs> so I go to art school. Uh, build a show Infinity G35 or a show oh, yeah. Lexus IS300. So show a what? An Infinity G35 or Lexus IS300, right? Mm -hmm. For what? For shows? Just for show. If you had money and you were going to build one. Um, I've seen more crummy G35s than I've seen crummy ISs. Yeah. So I would say IS over a G35. Absolutely. I like them just a little bit more. They have that more VIP-esque-ness to them. Yeah. And uh, the, the community following on the Lexus IS is absolutely massive. The G35 community is super strong, yes, but it's not the, the range of where the car usually sits in terms of, of niceness is like from here to here, where it seems the Lexus IS yeah. community is very like this, you know what I mean? If, yeah, if they're modifying yeah. it, it's usually pretty well done, so. Yeah, I agree 100%. I just, the, the body lines, and once again, just like the S2K, a car that was extremely ahead of its time. Yeah. Um, just the, you know, the interior features, and I love the tail lights. I love the triangular yeah. tail lights with the, uh, the circular inlays on yep. the trunk. It just looks dope. And um, Jared, our guy that works here, has a uh, bagged Infinity, and it looks great. But once again, he's more on the higher end of really doing yeah. a lot of attention to detail, clean parts, where sometimes you see him and you're like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, Lexus. Lexus, probably. That's it. Is that all 10? That's a wrap. All right, so that was our third episode of This or That. If you made it all the way through here, don't forget to subscribe and drop a comment on what you'd like to see us talk about next. That's all I have. That's it. Appreciate you guys watching, and we will catch you. And we're going to try to do these every other week. And then if you guys want to, uh, for us to do this a little bit longer, we can. But we wanted to keep the episodes a little bit shorter. We would love to sit and talk for an hour, but we weren't sure if that was too much for you yeah. guys. So give us your feedback. Let us know what you think, and we will catch you next time. Peace. Peace.